everybody. This is Tiffany Rose with Guild Mortgage and Mortgage and Mindset in Minutes. And we are here today with an amazing guest from Guild Mortgage. It's David Blasick. He is Director of Product Development, and he has some awesome information for us. So thank you for being with us, Dave. You're very welcome. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So we're just going to kind of jump right into it because I know your time is valuable and you got a lot on your plate. And this is something I really wanted to thank you for taking the time to explain because I'm interested in it myself. And I know that it's a product that's just kind of getting out there, I think. So we want to know more about it. So are you ready? I'm ready. Go for it. Okay, cool. So we are talking about cross mod homes today. And I assume that's cross modification homes, just kind of short for it, right? It is, yes. Okay. Now tell us, what is a cross mod home in a nutshell? Okay. So one thing it's important to know that a cross mod home is still a HUD manufactured home. Okay. So it still has a HUD plate on it, like all manufactured homes have to have. The difference is, is that when it's built, the factory has to build it to um, higher specs, different specs than just your traditional uh, manufactured home. So those could include um, uh, higher pitched roofs. So the, the roof would be higher. Um, dormers, which are kind of the things that uh, kind of stick out of the home. So they'll be, they'll be like one, two or three dormers. Um, typically you'll see these with attached garages or carports. Uh, they'll have a, um, a porch. The porch has to be 72 square feet. And then those are the things that you would notice when driving by. And also concrete driveway, sidewalks. Now it doesn't have to have all those things, but it does have to have the majority of them. And then inside the home, uh, there are requirements such as uh, uh, energy efficient appliances, um, like a nest kind of thermostat, things like that. Um, so those are the things that you would see if you did a tour of one of these homes. So they're still a HUD home, but they're built to these higher specs. And when they're built to these specs at the factory, at the very end, there'll be a sticker. It's going to be either the Fannie Mae sticker or a Freddie Mac sticker that's going to be affixed next to the HUD plate. So Freddie Mac's um, uh, name of these homes is called Choice Home. Fannie Mae's is MH Advantage. So all cross mod homes will be either a Choice Home or a, mini, or a MH Advantage or both. So 100% of cross mods will have either one or both stickers next to the HUD plate. Okay, and you just mentioned something about appliances. Does it come with all of that? Um, no, like like any home that you would purchase, um, of course, there's upgrades, right? So you, of course, you can, um, you know, pay for your upgraded countertops and floorings and cabinets, as well as, of course, you know, your your appliances and things like that too. So okay, so I just built a. The reason why I ask about that is I just built an in-law unit on my property. My mom lives in it now, but it was the nightmare of my last life, like my last twelve months of my life. So. I'm so happy it's done. I had to pick out all this stuff and it was just really a pain. So is cross mod homes easier compared to just building a single family residence? Dramatically easier. Okay, so I would say kind of that gets into some of the benefits of these, right? So uh, we've got a bit of a housing supply issue, right? Um, in pretty much all markets in the country, especially for affordable homes. Uh, you know, you're hearing about homes go on the market and you, know, you have 20, 30, 40 offers on these. Um, so these all manufactured homes, it's a great um, um, solution, right? Because you can get these homes to the market much faster. So with the cross mod homes in particular, again, they're factory built. They're built, um, you could, one of these homes could be a 2000 square foot home and it's built in nine days. Now it may take a while to get the home built because the demand has increased. People are be, um, becoming more and more aware of these homes. Uh, a lot of the factories were shut down due to COVID. So there is a backlog. So again, it, it, could, take, it could take six to 12 months uh, before they even start your home. But once they start, it's, uh, it's built in less than two weeks. So some of the uh, big differences with site build, um, one, this, this, the speed to build, right? They're factory built um, outside of weather conditions, et cetera, built much faster. Uh, per square foot, they're probably about 30, 40% uh, more affordable than your site build. And then also when it's finished, believe it or not, one of these homes, it's called a 2000 square foot double wide cross mount home. All the, all the trash and debris from building that could fit into two 30 gallon barrels. That's it. So that in addition to all the requirements of being energy efficient um, in the home itself, these homes are very, very green, as opposed to the home that you probably 
built or the add-on or ADU, I mean, when that's finished, you've got nails and wood and plastic and things like that all over the place. So none of that exists. It's I all- I had to get two new tires, yes, from running over nails. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And and uh, when we went to go look at the first homes that were built and Guild was the very first lender to announce the MH Advantage Crossmont program. We were the very first lender to close on one of these homes. It was back in Tennessee and it was in a site built neighborhood. And I bring that up because when you're driving through this neighborhood, there were some homes that were being built, some site built, stick built homes that were being built. And then these cross mod homes, you would never know which one is which. You, you wouldn't, um, but the ones that were site built, they had plastic, they had uh, mounds of dirt and uh, just trash kind of everywhere. And the site built home, or I'm sorry, the um, cross mod homes, they were brought in by a truck one day and it usually takes about three or four weeks before they are able to set it. Um, but just the, the speed to completion is much, much better. And then- And they're so they're cute. I, I mean, they're adorable. I looked on, online after I saw them on the leadership summit and they were so cute that I actually got really interested to buy one for myself. Now, do I need to hire a contractor to connect the plumbing and get the water source together and add the meter and do all of that? Or is that something that, that I guess Clayton Homes is who we have the relationship at Guild Mortgage, right? So do yeah, so, yeah, right. So, so these homes are um, these homes are offered um, by most manufacturers. Uh, Clayton, just as an example, so they build about forty five percent of all manufactured homes to begin with, but there are some other large ones as well: Champion Skyline, Cavco, Deer Valley. So there are definitely others. Uh, Clayton is the biggest. So when you um, here lies some of the challenges with with these homes in itself. Manufactured homes, for the most part are sold only when they're ordered. And they're only ordered only when, say, the family drives into the retail manufactured home lot. So, meaning if you're out with a realtor every weekend looking for the perfect three bedroom, you're typically never going, you're typically not going to choose a brand new cross modern manufactured home because the real estate agents are really not part of that formula, right? Mm. So, to answer your question, um, you know, if you went, if you talk to a re uh, manufacturing home retailer, whether it's Clayton or one of the others, so then they are kind of typically your, your general contractor from that point on. So they can assist you with the uh, permit applications, um, with the, um, uh, you know, with the grading and the, and the prepping of, of the land um, and, and the infrastructure, the power, sewage and all that stuff. They can, they can be your GC for all that. So I don't have to go into it blindly. I pick this house and then I have to call all these unreliable contractors and delay the project and spend nope. thousands because that's my fear in doing something like that. No, yeah, the, yeah the, un, the, the typically the retail um, office can take care of all that for you. I would tell you that it's, uh, it's much easier if you already own the land. So if you're going in and needing to finance both the land and the home at the same time, it's, it is a bit clunkier. So if you already own the lot and then um, work with the um, MH retailer for the, for the home part of it and then the site prep. Okay. And I do know a lot of people that call me and they're like, Tip, I just want some land or I just want a house that I can tear down and build something cheap on it to stay in this area. Or for me, I want to buy a lake house in you know, Lake Tolick and buy a piece of land and put a house on it. But I didn't want to spend a million dollars putting, right. you know, putting a, a property on that. I don't need that for a vacation home. I just want something cute we can sleep in and I want to have it with a deck and a pool overlooking the lake. But the cross mod homes are uh, 20, 250,000 compared to a million dollars to put it on the lake. So exactly a great opportunity. And I, this is why I wanted to get the word out. Um, do you think that this is something that's realistic to get financing for? I know at Guild Mortgage, but is it 20% down? Is it uh, tougher to qualify for these types of homes? 3% down. 3% down. So that's a big difference with um, with the financing part of it. And honestly, one of the biggest challenges with these homes is really just the education of the financing benefits. Again, if you go into a retail shop or retail manufactured home shop, they know all about the homes. They know how to sell the homes. They know all the features of the homes. That's their job. But when it comes to actually, you know, what are the financing benefits? Should their buyer buy a cross mod home as opposed to your standard manufacturing home? They're probably not going to know, and that's okay. That's not their job. 
But that's where Guild comes in, right? We've got professionals like you all over the country that can work with our manufacturing home retailers to educate them on the finance and benefits. Again, so the, the family comes in and if they're looking at the $200,000 double wide, and then they're also looking at this cross model home that's maybe 220,000, what they don't know is if they, if they buy the home that's more expensive, the monthly payment could be less. And also they could come in with as little as 3% down. And again, that's like with the MH Advantage um, uh, Fannie Mae program. Because if it's a cross mount home, and if they are in the right loan program, which someone like a Tiffany Rose would put them in, um, then they can get uh, the, the price would, would mirror site bill pricing, meaning that they're not gonna have any price add-ons just because it's a HUD manufactured home. That's one thing. They can get in with those little as little as 3% down, um, that's another. And also when the home is complete, the appraiser of course has to come out and review the house. Because there are not many cross mount homes in existence yet, they're not gonna find true, they're not gonna find um, comps. So that appraiser, they can now choose site bill comps. So now the, the home is gonna hold its value. So, so again, when you're looking at it side by side of buying a more expensive home with your traditional uh, manufactured home, because the rates are going to be better. The pricing is going to be lower or better. The buyer, the buyer can have lower monthly payments, even with a more expensive home. Wow. And that really eliminates not even the decision of a cross mod versus manufactured, but a single family residence versus cross mod. It's that like happy medium between the manufactured and single family. I have a lot of people calling me asking, do you do modular? Do you, do you manufacture? And it's just different guidelines, different you know, we don't do property inspection waivers if we're refinancing a manufactured home. So there's a lot of different things that is a deterrent. But this cross mod is just kind of an in-between that's almost treated the same as a single family residence, right? According to Gil. Well, what, what you're doing right now is you're defining the term cross mod. Right. So again, it's a, cross, it's a crossover modular. Okay. So as we know, modular homes are still priced as SFR stick built homes but this is still a HUD manufactured home. So it's kind of a crossover from that. It's still factory built. So everything you just said is exactly um, spot on. You know, you, you have the best of both worlds. You have the best of the pricing and the um, appraiser part of it for the site built and also the aesthetics. And then also the, you still have a factory built home that can built, be built um, much cheaper and much, much faster. And, and But again, the finished product is not going to be uh, you know, the traditional horrible stigma of a manufactured home, right? The box. And this is definitely not the ugly box. Meaning, uh, I mentioned the neighborhood that I've driven through. You wouldn't know, you really would not know which one is site built and which one um, is it was built in the factory. There's, you, you wouldn't know at all. I saw them online and they look great. And I love the flexibility of being able to do whatever I want. If I buy a piece of land, I can set it back further. I can have, you know, like a yes. deck. I don't have to find that perfect home that's already built. And I also don't have to go through what I went through with my in-law project, building an actual property and dealing with all that. This is just somewhat cookie cutter. You know, um, when you look online, there's maybe five different models of houses, but they're, they're great. It's a great opportunity. They are. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity and there's so many different um, uh, things you can do with these. I mean, again, it, it really addresses the housing supply issues, especially with affordable housing. I mean, imagine being a first time home buyer, you know, in your market. I mean, yes. how do you find, how do you even find a home? You know, and if you're looking for a three bedroom, you're not going to find it in Walnut Creek. I mean, at a certain price point, right? But, you know, so instead of sacrificing, you know, home size or lot size, you know, you don't have to make any sacrifices at all. You can still get the home that you want on the lot size that you want. Again, because these homes are again, 30, 40% more affordable than your site built home. Okay. So, and again, that's the big miss. The big challenge is education because the folks that are going out there looking for that perfect three bedroom, they don't know about these homes. Again, like I said, typically realtors are not involved in a new manufactured home sale. So their agent that they're working with typically doesn't know about these new type of homes either because they're not gonna go to the uh, manufactured home retailer. Um, so in the folks that are driving to a manufactured home retailer, they're going there for a reason knowing that they're going to buy a manufactured home. But in their mind, they still have that stigma of what an MH looks like. 
So they probably don't even know about a cross mud home. And then should they see these great pictures of a cross mud home, then great. But again, the other big challenge is the person selling them at the retail shop, they may not know of the finance and benefits. So they may, you know, they may uh, point to a lender on the lender board and say, hey, call this guy. And that, and that guy puts them in an FHA loan and they don't get they don't get all the benefits. Whereas if they call you and you're educated and you can put them in the right program to save them a lot of money. And we've had multiple loans that we've closed with this MH advantage with the cross mod, multiple ones that were uh, loans that were brought over from another lender because that lender didn't know what they were doing. And we yes. do. Yes. And in, in the one of the manufacturers, again, the largest one in the country, they own three mortgage companies and they refer uh, to Guild all the time, often. I'm feeling like as you're saying this, this is reminding me of like the 2008 when I got into FHA because the market was crashing, NAGAM loans went away, interest only. And I turned to FHA because it was low money down, there was down payment assistance. I became an expert in it and it kept me alive during 2008. Now FHA is so much more known. It's it's very, very common. Right. But at the time, you know, there was chidaps and all kinds of stuff that we were dealing with. And I had to learn it. And so I feel like this is almost kind of that same thing of a lot of people just don't know what they're doing, don't understand it, but it's a great product that people shouldn't be afraid of, right? Absolutely. In in you know, 2008, that was uh there's a huge transition, you know, in the economy, in our industry, and we're going through one again right now. Right, so rates are starting to tick up a little bit. So the, um, you know, so the refis are kind of going away for the most part, but much bigger than that, again, is the affordable housing issues that we have. Yeah. There's yeah. just, there just isn't inventory anywhere. Yeah. So again, this is, and obviously you have a lot of people that are buying investment properties. So every investment property someone buys, that's one less home on the market for a first time home buyer. Yes. So again, these homes are, it's not an end all solution. But it's a certainly great, it's a great um, opportunity that yes. many people really don't, they don't know, they're just not aware of. And I'm glad you addressed that part uh, over the last couple of minutes, because of course, this podcast is called Mortgage and Mindset in Minutes. And it's a little on mortgage, a lot on mindset, because some of these things, it's just the basics. You just stated out the facts, but there's this huge piece of it, the mindset of, I can't do this. I don't understand it. I'm scared. I'm going to make a bad investment. There's so much fear of the unknown that goes into it. So that's why I think it's really awesome that Guild Mortgage puts it out there, understands it, has relationships with these cross bond manufacturers, and that, you know, they just need to be willing to take the leap and, and apply and see where it takes us, right? Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Well, good. Well, I love it. Thank you so much, David. Do you have any other thing, thing that you wanted to touch on or say about this cross mod, hopefully craze that we're going to see? You know, the uh, I'll just leave it with this. I mean, again, when we have the largest home builder in the country coming to Guild, we have Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac coming to Guild. We have MHI, which is the Mortgage um, Manufacturing Housing Institute coming to Guild. They're coming to us because, again, we're, we're a 61-year-old company that was built and grown on helping affordable uh, people into affordable um, housing, affordable loans. Um, so this is, this is what we do. This is so deep in our DNA. So even though some people are getting to know about these homes and this initiative now, this is a top priority for our company nationwide. I'm sold. I'm doing it. I'm going to to my clients. I'm going to understand it, but I'm buying one myself. So I'm totally jazzed about you participating with this and educating us. And I know we're going to get um, some people into some great homes with this. So thank you. Awesome. So much. All right. Thanks everybody for listening. Don't forget to watch the actual video on YouTube and Tiffany Rose Mortgage and Mindset Minutes. And you can find us on YouTube or the uh, Apple podcast. Thank you so much. Bye.